Hi guys, my name is Becky and I am from the Story Girls and you guys loved this macrame net that we made on our summer DIYs and hacks video previously. So this got us thinking what more we can do with macrame because it's actually not that hard. So we had the idea to do this gorgeous hanging macrame chair and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. I do wanna give a quick shout out to Angie who has a blog post that inspired some of the frame and how to make some parts of this chair. But overall the knots were standard and we know how to do that and we ended up putting our own spin on the whole thing. So I hope you guys enjoy this DIY. So to start, we went to the hardware store and picked up three one and a quarter inch dowels and two five eighths of an inch dowels. You can use a circular saw or a hand saw to cut the thicker dowels down to 30 inches in length and the thinner dowels to 36 inches. Since drawing a straight line on a round dowel is pretty hard, we actually used a long strip of tape and that helped us really determine a nice straight line across the dowel. So on two of the thick 30 inch dowels, mark out two inches and three and a half inches in from each end. And on the last 30 inch dowel, mark just three and a half inches from one end. We're using a 5 eighths of an inch drill bit to drill straight through the dowel on all pieces where we've marked. Then give the whole thing a quick sand. Put the thicker one and a quarter inch dowel with only one set of holes in it away for now. Then take your thicker one and a quarter inch dowels with two holes and slide one of your 5 8 inch dowel in through the outside hole. Do this on both sides, leaving about one inch of the smaller dowel out from the thicker dowel. Drill a pilot hole directly in the center of what would be the thinner dowel and only one inch down. Add a one inch wood screw to hold the whole thing in place. Repeat this on the other side and flip your other large dowel onto the other ends of the 5 8 inch dowel and repeat all the steps. So now that the frame is completely built, we are gonna move on to the fun macrame tying part of this. So we are using quarter inch rope. Now you can use macrame rope, but polyester rope from the hardware store is actually much cheaper, so we are going this route instead. You'll need about 200 yards of it in total, but we started by cutting 16 26 foot pieces. We next use the two open holes in the top of our frame to hang it to a pole or you can use a hook or something where you can hang it so you can tie your knots. Now if you're using a hook you can just do like a V shape but since we're doing it on a pole we thought that two strings going straight up and down was the best way to hold this frame without it like shifting and moving a lot while we were doing it. This system is temporary so just hang it whatever way is the best for you so we can knot all the ropes. There really is no top or bottom to the wooden frame at this point so just pick whatever side you like and hang it from that side. Alright now we're ready to get macrame -ing. So. Take one of your 26 foot rope pieces, fold it in half, fold the loop around the dowel and loop the ends of the string through the loop and pull tight. Repeat this with all 16 pieces of rope which will leave you with 32 strands. Now on to tying the knots. If you've already seen our net video then you know how to do this but if not don't worry I'm going to go through it again. If not. If not then I'm going to teach you how to knot the knots. Bring together two of your loops to create a group of four strings. Use the two outer strings to tie a box knot around the two middle. Cross the outer left string over the two middle and then bring the right string over the front, around the back and through the hole created between the left string and the middle. Pull this tight. Next start with the outer right rope, bring it in front of the two middle and then bring the left over the front, around the back and through the hole created between the right string and the two middle. You've now completed two knots and you can move over to your next set of four ropes and repeat. Again, tying two knots and alternating the side you start with each time. We went all the way across and we totally forgot to loop on one of our strands. So if you were counting along, we had 15, but you should have 16. Once the first full row is complete, move down to start the next row. This time, skip the first strings and begin with the third string in. This is now your outer left rope. Knot together these four ropes the exact same way we did the row above. Skipping the first two strings ensures the pattern will be offset as we go. Once we get to the end, you'll have two extra strings left out here as well. On the third row, go back to knotting with the very first rope. You'll alternate between starting with the first rope and the third rope every new line. As I was going, I actually noticed that my rows were becoming too close together and this was using up the rope a lot faster than I wanted it to. So, as you go, make sure each row of knots has about a three inch distance between them. Continue knotting rows until your macrame hangs about 45 inches long. It should hang longer than the bottom dowel and you should have a good amount of unknotted rope left as well. In groups of four ropes at a time, wrap the rope up from the back, around the dowel and tie a large basic knot. 
try to smooth out the four ropes before pulling tight so they look nice and neat once you're finished. Split the groups of four ropes in half and knot together the two groups of two strings to create an extra strong knot. Continue double knotting the remaining groups of four ropes. So you could cut the ropes here and be totally done with the swing seat, but we're actually gonna do a fun macrame fringe on the bottom with the leftover rope, because it's gonna look so pretty. Skipping the first two ropes, complete a row of box knots, leaving the last two ropes out as well. For the new row, skip the first four ropes and the last four ropes as well. On the next, skip the first six and the last six as well. Continue skipping the ropes until you create an upside down triangle pattern with the knots. Now that the shape is created, you can do two more full lines of regular box knots to create a finished edge. Really, there's no wrong way to do this. Once you know the box knot system, you can kind of add ropes, skip ropes to create a shape and a pattern that you're happy with. Trim the remaining rope in a matching V-shaped pattern. So the seat part of the chair is now complete. So now to tie it all together with the thicker rope. So you need about 20 feet of half inch rope. Start by cutting one long piece that is 10 and a half feet long. Knot a large loop in the center, and this is how we'll hang the chair. String the two ends through the two holes on the last dowel that we haven't used yet. Leave about a 13 inch gap between the loop and the dowel. Tie two knots under the dowel to hold this all in place. Now string the ends through the remaining holes in the top of the chair and knot these in place as well. This will leave you with about a 21 inch gap between the top two dowels. Next, cut two ropes that are three and a half feet long each. String them through the holes in the bottom dowel of the chair and add a knot to hold them in place. As a final step, we're adding one more set of holes in the very top dowel, one and a half inches in from the current holes. Lastly, string the ends of the rope through these holes and knot them tightly in place at the ends. So as we went along, there were some things we wanted to tweak from the original blog post because we liked it better or it was easier that way. So make sure to check out our blog post if you want all the official measurements that we ended up using. It will be linked below. Actually, both of them will be linked below, so check out both. So now your chair is complete. So to hang this guy, make sure you do it to a really strong branch outside if you're planning to hang it outside. Or if you want to hang it inside like we did, make sure to use a proper ceiling mounting kit and go into a ceiling stud. If you're unsure about any of this, make sure to get professional help because I don't want you guys falling and hurting yourselves. So that's it, maybe it seemed like a lot, but trust me, this is a really fun, easy project to do. Again, check the blog post below if you want all the measurements. I really hope you guys try this one. Please send it to us on Instagram using hashtag ZaragoSquad because I love seeing when you guys make our stuff. If you love macrame, let me know below and we can do more of it in the future because it is really fun. And once you know the knots, everything is simple. Thanks so much for checking this out, guys, and we will see you next time. Bye! If you like it, like it, love it, sub it. I can't do this by myself. Okay, bye! <laughs>
So to start, we went to the hardware store and picked up three one and a quarter inch dowels and two five eighths of an inch dowels. You can use a circular saw or a hand saw to cut the thicker dowels down to 30 inches in length and the thinner dowels to 36 inches. Since drawing a 